Hello everyone, this is Flatline, and today I'm going to be doing a PvZ cast, and it's going to be spawning on the bottom left. It's going to be the Red Protoss from Root. This Root Minigun. And spawning on the top right as the uh, Blue Zerg is going to be... I have no idea how to say this name. So we're going to say Wick. That's the only thing I see. Wick Wick. Oh. Okay, so it's Wick Wick. I guess that's his name. And he's going to be the uh, Blue Zerg. It's going to be his opponent. Now, Root Minigun. Just joined back up with Root. Um, he left Complexity because his interest is no longer into the uh, live competitive events uh, for now. So he is just going to. He thought it was best if both of them just parted away because Complexity is a you know one of those powerhouse teams in North America, and they usually send their players to these live events like MLG, IPL, and ASL, all that kind of jazz. And it just wasn't in Minigun's interest to participate at live events at the uh, during this time, so they uh, they parted away. And you know, he joined up back with the Root. And Root, they they have some sponsors, but I'm pretty sure their budget isn't as high or as flexible as um, Complexity. So they are mostly going to be focusing on online events, I would assume, like uh, team leagues and and all that kind of stuff. And that fits perfectly with Minigun. Minigun can play online. He's fun. He's inside his home environment, so he's pretty comfortable where he's at. And he also stated in the um, in the interview that he is a uh, he wasn't feeling like a team with complexity. He just knew um, TriMaster, and that's it. That's the only person he talked to. But everyone else, he just didn't really talk to or hang out with with complexity, and he felt isolated um, from them so he thought it was best because most of them were in the uh, complexity team house except him he chose not to go there and complexity was completely fine with it they treated him pretty well in fact it's just that their vision of 2013 were different and just the best thing to do for both of them so going into this game um, Wick Wick is just going to be opening up pretty standard with the uh, pull then hatch and they're probably going to get a fast third hatch. And Minigun is, went off with a Nexus first. Now Minigun, I haven't, I don't think I ever casted a game of his, but he is definitely a top 3. He's definitely top 3 in a Protoss right now. Absolutely smart player and he just, he plays really really smart. It's not his mechanics that pretty much make him stand out. Um, it's pretty much how he plays, how he responds um, to situations and handles them very, very well. So we get to see one of his games now, and um, I found this on Drop.sc. So if you do want to find this game, pretty much you could just look up Root Minigun on Drop.sc and you see uh, this game against Wickwick on their website, which is also a fantastic website to uh, find replays and upload replays. So you should definitely check them out. Uh, but right now it's pretty much um, quiet for now because nothing you can really tell what Protoss is doing. I mean, he did get two gas. He hasn't started plus one. Um, this could be a very good indication of him trying to get a very fast tech. He wants to get a tech before his plus one. Nope, he's actually going to start it with his ever, uh, with his warp gate. So I guess he just wants them to line up right. Basically, once this work gets done, plus one attack should be finishing up for Root Minigun. Um, and going to Zerg's base, he is getting his three hatches already finished up. He's getting his double gas. Pretty much playing very, very standard from the Zerg side. Um, Minigun still hasn't thrown down any of his tech yet. He's getting a, a Stalker out, which is pretty smart. Corner boosting it out. This is going to help deny any of those uh, overlords to scout any of his tech. So, Minigun... What is he actually going to go for? This map is pretty good to go for Robo. Um, Robo-centric builds. It's very easy to to hold your third on this map than, let's say, like Daybreak or something like that. 
the, the third on daybreak can be somewhat difficult to hold because of how far you are stretched out. And we do some, see some kind of pressure going on into this game right now. I think I just poke in a little bit with the uh, six links. It's going to cause four more links being produced. And that's what Minigun pretty much wants uh, Wick Wick to do. He just wants him to corner boost some units. And wow, he's actually going to get a very fast third. So he's going one gate, Robo, fast third. And now this is very, very interesting. We see how he holds this. Like I said, this is one of the few maps where you can get a... <clears throat> pretty decent fast third on because you could you could easily wall this off with two gateways and a cannon and so all you have to do is just focus your priority at your third and then once that is um once you settle that the zerg has to accept that he can't kill it and so he would just get a fourth tech to you know investors or whatever he wants to go for and then go from there this also allows him to get a very fast observer. It's going to be able to scout what the Zerg player is going to be doing. I like Minigun. He also has this watchtower with the Zealot able to spot all these links from Wick Wick. We're going to see him immediately wall this off with that two gateway and the can. Oh, just the pylon. So he's not going to put a can in there. Very, very interesting. And work it is finishing up at the same time. Plus one already finished. He's starting up plus one armor. And Immortal is in production now. He still hasn't scouted. Uh, Wick Wick's tech. He only saw a lot of links coming out from Wick Wick. He also sees, I like this position though by this observer. He's able to see where the roach is. Um, I mean, the units coming from Wick Wick, he's gonna look like he wants to apply some pressure, but he's not fully committing into this. You don't see him making too many roaches. So I expect him to get a pretty quick fourth as a response. And there's that uh, drone coming over here towards this fourth. And he's going to plant that down. The infestation pit has finished up for him as well. Minigun, on the other hand, finished up his third. He's going to try to get some, uh, corner boosting some probes over there. Um, and, you know, the armor is almost done. Um, I think he forgot the Twilight Council. He doesn't have the Twilight Council right now, so his upgrades are going to be put to a halt uh, temporarily, which is unfortunate for him. Um, a good transition when you get this very fast start from Minigun. Is if you go uh, for a 2 2 timing attack, you get plus 1 plus 1, you get a Twilight Council and a Forge. And once that Twilight Council finishes, you start 2 2 at the same time. And you can hit a very nasty, sick 2 2 timing. It's pretty difficult for uh, Xerix to hold, in my opinion. Um, as long as you stay with the Immortal, uh, Blink Stalkers, Zealot, Sentry, Archon, and High Templars. Uh, but it looks like Minigun wants to play a little bit more passive than that, reducing that Forge and Twilight Council going down for him slightly later. Or oh, he's going to come over, he's going to spot this extra Forge, so he knows he's going to be going pretty dedicated on ground. With this information, he knows that Minigun is not going to transition into Sky Toss, because you'll see lately a lot of Protoss are trying to implement some kind of Sky uh, transition in the PvZ matchup, because you do want to get into the Sky... Um, Sky composition. Once that Zerg player has like 20 Brewlords or something, it's very, very difficult without a very good vortex. But it, it's pretty luck based to get that kind of good vortex off against like a good Zerg player. So you don't really want to rely onto that, in my opinion. Now, Wick Wick is getting his hive already. Spire is on the way as well. It's lining this up very nicely. Um, he's also getting plus two Carapace, plus one. Um, Missile, I mean, plus one, what is this, melee? Yeah. Plus one melee is finishing up and getting his plus two melee on the way. Now he's going to start putting down some spines. He does have a lot of drones, 90 drones coming out for him. He wants to put up all these spines, which is perfectly fine for him. Which is going to help him secure this base. He also has investors to help delay this time. He also has a lot of wings here to try to delay this push even further and further. As Tutu is on the way, we do see external thermalance being researched and a second robotics uh, finishing up for minigun somewhere. Oh, there it is. It's also adding on a lot of gateways. So for the amount of gateways, he's got 12 gateways and double robo. He might be going for a little poke in because he's also getting a stargate. So it looks like he's gonna apply some kind of pressure and then he's gonna back up. I think it's gonna hit right when he gets Tutu, which should be a very strong attack. Um, Wick Wick on the other hand looks like he wants to play a little bit more aggressive as he is also getting his fifth base. 
not sure if I agree with this fifth base right here because um, it's getting towards the Protoss army. But at the same time, it can also mean that Wickwick wants to put on the aggression fairly soon. Once this Greater Spire is done, I feel like he's going to try to plant um, some spines up here and then position his army here. I'm just going to force it um, Minigun to engage into this to hold this fourth base that it looks like he wants to try to get. And this is pretty smart from Minigun. Using the uh, four stalkers and observer, picking out these three creep tumors and then just blinking away. Very, very nicely done by him. And he's also trying to get a tail over here, but has been denied by the links. He's also getting the ring of spores because this is around the time when Protoss is going to try to transition into getting some warp prism harass going on which you can do see the gravity drive being researched. I'm just going to turn those warp prisms into speed prisms fairly soon and do see charge on the way. 3-3 three, three on the way as well for Minigun. And 2-2 two, two is finishing up for Wickwick now. It does have a lot of investors. The, the units have 100 Zerglings. For the Zerg player. 100 Zerglings, wow. 12 Infestors, which is pretty good healthy now for now. He's probably gonna want a couple of more, but here comes the Brewlords. Five Brewlords have been more. And we'll see how he wants to respond to this. We do see a small Ling run by coming over here trying to attempt to pull his army back, and he does succeed. Fleet Beacon on the way as well. He does want to transition into getting some kind of a mothership. And this is where Protoss needs to find some kind of way to buy some time. They have the Brewlords, they have the Infestors. This is pretty much the time Zerg is going to play pretty much aggressive and it's all up to Protoss to um, figure out a way to buy some time. Do you see this Immortal drop coming out from Minigun? I like this a lot. He had those two Immortals initially um, that he produced to kind of defend against any kind of Roachling aggression coming from Wickwick. But since it's not going to happen whatsoever, he can transition this into the later stage. You know, just use the two Immortals that he doesn't really want in a super late game army composition. Just use it for pretty much drops. You can see him try to target fire the uh, hatchery. Is he going to get it this down? It's going to pull all of these units back over here. Um, Wickwick does not want to lose this to just two mortals here and they're just doing a fantastic job. We do see another run by coming over here from Minigun to be able to knock out this base. But the hatchery does stay alive for Wickwick. He does also have a queen. Not only has transfusion as well. Minigun is playing very aggressive out on the map. Very active with his units and I like this from him. He knows you know, that mortal drop was going to force all the units coming back towards that base. It's time for him to you know, play a little bit aggressive with his army but he needs to be very very careful. You can see him trying to have vision of the map right here using that stalker and the zealot to, um, to grab that watchtower because he needs to make sure his units does not get fungled. If his units get fungled, it's pretty much over for Minigun because he doesn't have... It's really hard for him to rebuild his army in a very small timing frame because once you kill that off as a Zerg player, you're instantly going to go straight towards the Protoss base. I think it's very difficult. Mothership, by the way, is halfway done for him, and plus one shields is on the way. Storm is on the way as well. We do see a couple of high templars being uh, worked in for minigun. 180, 194 to 174 in favor of Zerg, and Zerg is gathering up a rather large bank right now. He has about 8k uh, minerals in the bank and 1400 gas. I mean, I do like this investor right here. Pro Infestor play right here, but it looks like he's not going to really be able to do anything anyways because the Brewlings can do it for him, and that's actually a lot more free than using the energy for uh, some some Tessa Terrans or Fungos or whatever, whatever he wants to use. Now it looks like Minigun wants to engage, we do see that little den um, cancel coming out from that little Zealot run by over there. And we do see that he does want to engage, but he doesn't have Vortex. Oh my god, the Brewlords are out of position! Snipes off two Brewlords right there. Very nice job by Minigun not losing anything. And there goes the Storms killing off all the uh, Zerglings, killing off the Infested Terrans as well. This is going to get pretty difficult for Wickwick. Wickwick is losing a bunch of units, but now that the Fungals are being casted, the uh, number of Stalkers are dwindling quite a bit here. And Wickwick is going to be able to retreat from this. Um, Minigun does lose his four. That's actually unfortunate for him. He also tried to establish a fifth base with the Zergling on the bike. It's just too good for him. We do see a Zealot run by earlier just knock out this base. Fantastic job by him again. The 90s bases. Now the 90s bases, yeah he has a lot of minerals, he could rebuild it. The thing is he also loses production. He also loses the gas he gets from these extra bases. It's all about the gas and super late game and PvZ for both of the players. 
and, uh, and that's why you can see a lot of lanes and a lot of zealots being produced. They're mainly to just trade for bases. They're mainly to trade bases so they're able to deny the amount of gas. You see another warping of zealots over here, able to not even force a cancel, just pretty much take out that hatchery. And Wake Wake is getting pressured quite a bit here. He does have a lot of investors, 14 investors and 5 rulers. Not enough rulers to deal with this army though. But he does have a lot of investors. We want to see how this pans out. Uh, best Terrans are being thrown down here. Some nice fungus and vortex beam casted onto some of those uh, some of those investors. And uh, it looks like he might have to back up. This engagement is not the best position for Minigun as this huge ledge right here is just favoring Wickwick right now. Very nice positioning by Wickwick. Um, with his blue loads over there, it's very hard for Minigun to kind of engage into that with the Stalkers. They just do not have enough range. And I think he's overstepping his boundaries right now. And the uh, investors are able to prevail. Uh, take him out. Oh my gosh, he loses three investors unnecessarily right there. Quick, quick. Trying to re, uh, re establish composure right now. Getting some 10 links and two investors are out on the way as well. Do you see some more zealots being worked in over here? He's probably going to try to do a little run by as he engages towards the fourth of uh, Zerg. But did he overstep his boundaries? Uh, there is a decent amount of corruptors corrupting the uh, mothership. The mothership is going to get taken down. And this is where it gets very difficult for Colossus. Minigun trying to retreat um, immediately. But it looks like he's going to lose a couple of Colossus, maybe. Nope, he's just going to lose a War Prism. Perfectly fine for him. Also kills off this expansion one more time with those four zealots run by. Minigun trying to establish a fifth base on the top left side or middle left side of the map. You see the investor right here just chilling, burrowed, wandering. If we're going to be able to see that being used anytime soon later in the game, as a mothership is being produced at his main. Um, in the meantime, you see a blink over here trying to kill off some of these slings. Now, the slings are pretty cheap. Uh, from Zerg, these links are pretty much just to buy time. They don't pretty much to cause Minigun to play a little bit more defensive and not overly aggressive. Um, and we do see this war because they're finally getting sniped off over here. So hopefully, Wickwick will be able to establish a fifth base over here on the top left of Cloud Kingdom. Let's look at the upgrades. He is 3 3. Um, the Brew Lords are 1 2, and I like how he. Uh, emphasizes on the carapace. It's mainly you want to get the carapace when you're going brew load um, investor in PVZ. You just need them to sustain life. You don't really need them to have the extra bonus attack for their first put, uh, once the brew lords come out. You don't need that at all. You just need to make them um, a little bit more sturdy. And nice storms being casted onto the investors and brew lords. Brew lords are all, all weak, orange and yellow, but it looks like it's just too much. Too much for um, Minigun right now as he loses all of his classes, only having stalkers left. He's gonna have to cancel this base. You can see him immediately pull out all of his uh, probes. He does not want to lose any of those whatsoever. Minigun's gonna accept that loss right now as he retreats back towards his fourth. That investor still over here could play a big part of this uh, this game. He might be able, because I don't know. Oh, he does. Okay, he sees it. He sees it. He sees it with the observer. Nice snipe by him thinking that he could possibly get that mothership wherever it is, here it is. I was like looking on the minimap for like an exercised moving object. I found it. <laughs> In the meantime we do see this bit finally being established by Wilbur. You're probably gonna see some spines and like two spores being planted by him to secure this base fairly well against any kind of um, harassing play from Minigun. In the meantime Minigun is gonna try to establish the fifth base on the bottom right. Sixth base finally uh, being finished up for here for Wick Wick on the right side of the map as well. Both of them are pretty much playing passive now. Both of them accept the roles. You know, the guy has a mothership, we need to back off. At the same time, Minigun knows that Wick Wick has a pretty healthy amount of Blue Lords and Investors, so it's pretty difficult for him to engage. He needs to get in a very nice pos uh, position to, um, to engage into that kind of army. His classes are being produced there, mainly there to deal with the Brulings um, that the Brulings are going to be casting on top of the uh, the uh, stock team. Do you see 3, 2, 3 plus 3 shields are being uh, it's being researched right now for Minigun so he's trying to get the max upgrade plus 2 flyer attacks is on the way for uh, Wick Wick and this is going to help him deal with the um, the mothership with this corruptor very very well. Do you see that warp prism 
following the oh this is so smart by minigun he's keeping a war prism with his mothership with his army so he doesn't have to bring a uh, probe to put up a pylon and wait for that to build he has a mobile uh, mobile pylon with his army able to um, to warp in some units right there on the spot this is very smart by minigun i like this um, idea coming from minigun instead of using him for harassment he saw that you know what what Wick has is pretty much well protected. I can't do anything. Let me just use it to, uh, to help with my army, my main army, and deal with that with the reinforcements. We're using a warpin of zealots to be able to deny this base. Uh, Wick Wick's probably gonna accept that he's way out of position on the other side of the map. Do you see that warp prison trying to um, get inside here? And he might be able to. Actually, this whole entire main. It's completely um, out of position, but very wrong spot for the warp prism to go in. And we do see some little engagement coming over here um, in the middle of the map. And we do see that zealot run by coming over here, but it's going to be quickly denied by the links and spines, um, unfortunately. Going to the units tab, we do see 12 infestors, 16, inf I mean 16 infestors, 12 broodlords, and 13 corruptors. Uh, from Wick Wick, so we might see an additional eight more best, uh, eight more Googlers being morphed over here. And oh my gosh, look on the mini map, and I found this a burled infestor right next to a mothership. And this could be the game ender if he makes if he neurals of this uh, mothership and casts two force vortex. Could be pretty much game over right here. You see, um, infestor terrorists being popped up over here. This is gonna be quite annoying for minigun as he is also. Almost um, blocked him. We do see that vortex being casted, and oh my. What? <laughs> he vortexes his own investor, so he loses the neural. Oh my gosh, this is actually quite unfortunate. We do see Wick Wick um, trying to get in here really quickly, and he actually vortexes his whole army. I'm not sure. I think Minigun did that on purpose. But there's still one more vortex for the mothership, and this is actually all he needs. Nice storms going on to the corruptors. As long as he can take that out, the vortex will stay. Um, prevail and there it is nice vortex coming out from uh, minigun here and he's actually going to finally be able to get that juicy fungal best terrence are being thrown down trying to disrupt the ai of the archons to get inside there it looks like he's able to get in there and he's been able to deal with a lot of damage a lot of investors are being taken out as well as a couple of brew lords and now this whole entire army substantially weak and you see a little dance out from minigun there's a gg from wick wick um oh, wow Wow, 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 I felt like that game was pretty close. I, I would say it's a little bit, uh, I would say it's even. I would say it's fairly even. It all comes down to who has the best engagement. Um, and they declared right here, you know what, this is do or die for both of the players. Whoever wins this wins the game, essentially. Unfortunately for Wickwick, he had the advantage. He was able to narrow the mothership, but he casted a vortex onto his mothership, I mean onto his infester, so the infester was vortex in, which does uh, release the mothership from being merled, giving uh, Minigun the control of the mothership, and that was unfortunate for Wickwick. If he had casted two vortex away from his infestors, of course, he would have been in commanding shape, he would have been able to engage into this army, and Minigun would be and difficult in a very difficult position because the mothership is just eight supply wasted. It has no energy once to cast two vortex, and uh, it is just unfortunate for Wick Wick right there. But congrats to Minigun winning this epic game on Cloud, and uh, I'm finally happy that I finally got a game from Minigun. Um, it seemed pretty long. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel on youtube.com slash flyonlessy2 and you can follow me on twitch and twitter and facebook slash flyonlessy2 as well anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you